perspective. Yes. Now, okay, that's weird. And it turns out that this discrepancy makes a lot of things get all messed up. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now, now that we've got the two major things that relativity is based on out of the way, what does all of this mean for us? Okay, what does all of this mean for reality? Um, that's what we're going to talk about now, and that's the results of special relativity. Okay, we're going to list three results here. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to get through all three of them today. That's what I'm. That's my goal for today. Um, so here we go. Back to the train. Let me get back to the train. Okay. <laughs> all right. Back on the train. I, like I said, get used to these trains because we're training it all up. And again, let me draw my people down here. There we go. All right. Now. My train is parked at the station. Okay, again, please don't get too bored with the trains. It's going to get weird now. Here we go. All right. Again, relative to me, the train is going zero right now. And relative to you, the train is going zero. Now this time, here we go, this time, I want to measure the train. I want to measure the train. So let me get my meter stick out. Here we go. Yay! Let's pretend this is like a meter stick. And I'm going to measure the train. You guys like these graphics? These graphics cost a whole lot of money. Here we go. Here we go. I'm measuring this train. And let's say I do that, and I measure that train, and I measure that it is 10 meters long. It's a 10 meter long train, okay? And then you guys have your own ruler, okay? So you guys come up and you guys measure the train. Don't overthink this. How long is the train gonna be? If you guys measure that train with your ruler, how long is that train gonna be? So for me, it's 10 meters. Yeah, for you guys, you're also going to measure 10 meters, okay? You're also going to measure 10 meters. Okay, different situation, different situation. Let's say I start driving my train. So here's some, some motion lines, okay? I start driving my train, and it doesn't matter how fast I'm going. Let's say I travel by at 20 meters a second. Okay, so now, relative to you guys, you see the train go by at 20 meters a second, but from my point of view, it's still zero because I'm on the train. I'm moving with the train. So from my point of view, the train isn't moving away from me. Okay, now, all right, uh, help me out here. I measure the train. While I'm driving past you guys, I measure the train. How long am I going to measure this train to be? How long is this train from my point of view? Still 10. I'm going to measure 10 meters a second. So that's fine. Okay. And you guys do the same thing. You come out and you measure the train. As I drive by... Uh, maybe you take a picture of my train as I drive by so that you can uh, measure the length of that train. How, how, uh, how long is that train going to be from your point of view? How long is that train going to be from your point of view? There you go. Oh, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Yeah, so normally normally you'd think that it would be the same length, but you would actually measure it as not 10 meters anymore. As a bunch of you guys were saying, you would see it as shorter than 10 meters. 
okay, shorter than <laughs> 10 meters. There we go. Shorter than 10 meters, okay? Now, let's say I drive past even faster. Let's say now I drive by at 100 meters per second. And I measure the train. I measure the train while, oops, can't have that there. <laughs> I measure the train while driving by at 100 meters per second. I'm going to measure it as 10 meters long again. Bam, 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 bam. And if you guys measure it, what are you going to see this time? If I drove past even faster, when you measure that train, what are you going to notice this time? What you're going to get from that measurement? compared to the last time you measured it. Even shorter than before. Even shorter than before. That's correct. So some of you might have actually, I don't know if you guys have actually read into any of this stuff. It's super impressive that you guys are getting this. Um, so good job on this. So in other words, here, let's put this all together. No matter how fast my train is going, what length will I always measure for this train? What length will I always measure for this train? I'll always measure it as 10. That's correct. I'll always measure it as 10, no matter how fast I'm moving. Because from my point of view, the train is never moving away from me. But what you guys would see is the faster I drive past you guys, the shorter this train is going to be. If I'm sitting at the station, you guys would measure 10 meters a second. But the faster I drive by, the less and less that length will be. All of this is called, here we go, this is called length contraction. Length contraction. And the idea of length contraction is what we just said. If something moves a different speed than the viewer, its length will shrink. Contraction just means strength, so shrink. So length contraction is length shrink. But again, it's if something moves a different speed than the viewer, its length will shrink. Okay? If something moves a different speed than the viewer, its length will shrink. And here's something more important, even more important. The bigger the difference in speed between the viewer and the object, the bigger the effect. So if you see something go by at 100 miles an hour, it's going to shrink a little bit. If you see something go by at 1,000 miles an hour, it's going to shrink even more. Okay? Now, now, here's what, what the big question. Here's the big question, though. For this train, who is correct? Is the train, like, what's the real size of the train? Is this train actually 10 meters, or is it actually less than 10 meters, like you guys saw? Is the train actually 10 meters, or is it actually less than 10 meters? Here we go. Here's the real craziness of relativity, the train is both. The train is 10 meters relative to me, and it is actually smaller from the point of view of everybody off the train. So what I'm getting at here is this. I'm not talking about optical illusions. I'm talking about reality being different from different points of view, okay? So this train is 10 meters from my point of view, and it is a different size 
from your point of view. It doesn't just look smaller, it is smaller. Okay? Now, let, let me let me explain. Let me give you another situation because it, this is hard for your brain to accept. So let me give you a different situation, okay? Let's say, here we go, uh, you guys are train robbers, okay? Let's say you guys are train robbers, all right? And you know that I am on, I'm a banker, okay? My train, I'm a banker. I have a banker train, okay? So it's full of money, okay? So you want to rob my train uh, to steal my money, right? And, uh, you know, like I have like a top hat and a monocle and I've got a bunch of those bags with a money sign on them. That's, that's me. I'm, I'm going to drive by with that train. Um, and so you guys decide you're not just going to sit at the station. You're going to derail this train. Okay. You're going to derail this train. And how are you going to do it? You're going to shoot it with cannons. Okay. So here's the train tracks. You guys have wheeled up two cannons to the side of the track. That's, that's a cannon. That's another cannon. Like, they, they shoot cannonballs, okay? And the way you're going to derail this train is when the train drives by, you're going to shoot it with both your cannons. Um, and in order to derail the train, you have to hit it with both cannons. One cannon's not enough to mess up my train. You gotta hit it with both cannons to get that money, right? Um, yeah, it's a goofy plan. It's a dumb plan, but whatever. It's your plan. I didn't come up with it. This was your plan, okay? So only blame yourself. Now, check this out. Here we go. You need to figure out how far apart to put your cannons. You need to figure out how far apart to put your cannons, okay? Now, here we go, here we go. You came out to the train station last night to measure the train when it was not full of money yet, when it was just sitting at the station. And you measured that the train was 10 meters long. So, don't overthink this for me. What would be the maximum distance you could put between your cannons and still be able to sit the tr hit the train if the train was sitting right here. What would be the maximum? Would you want to? You wouldn't want to put your cannons a hundred meters apart because then you're not going to be able to hit that train at the same time. So the maximum distance you'd be able to put those things apart would be ten. So just to make sure you hit it with both cannons, let's say you put them eight meters apart. Because you're saying, oh, if that 10 meter train comes and parks right here, um, I'll still be able to hit it if I if I give I get myself some leeway there. Okay. Now here's the thing: what you don't take into account is that my train can go ridiculous speeds. So let's say I come up to I drive by when you guys are ready to fire your cannons, like you guys are standing right here, just ready to do those cannons. Um, I drive by at almost the speed of light. According to length contraction, if I drive by at almost the speed of light, what's the length of my train going to do? What's going to happen to the length of my train? It's going to shrink. In the direction that the train is moving, it's going to shrink. And because I'm going almost light speed, it's going to shrink a lot. It's going to get very short. So my train, that's my motion lines, my train could end up shrinking to a meter long. And then if you fired your cannons at that second, you would miss me because my train fit between the two cannonballs. Even though my train was 10 meters long when you measured it at the station, if I drive by fast enough, I can shrink my train down to where it will fit between these cannonballs. If this shrinking was an optical illusion, you'd still hit me. But here, you would miss me because I am actually shrinking. I'm 
actually shrinking from your point of view. So you will miss me. So the train is actually two different sizes at the same time. Size is something that we feel like is uh, set in stone because that's what we see in just everyday life. But actually, the size of an object depends on how fast it is moving and who is looking at it. An object can have more than one size at once. Okay? Um, here's my next question. This probably seems really weird, and it's probably hard for you to wrap your brain around it. Here's my next question. Why have you never seen objects do this? Why have you, because you probably have seen a cop car go by, and that cop car looks, why a cop car? Whatever, it's a car. You've probably seen a car go by, and that car is going to look the same size when it's driving by. Why have you never seen this? Why have you never seen the length contraction effect? Yeah, so human beings are only used to seeing slow speeds. So 100 miles an hour, 1,000 miles an hour, uh, 100,000 miles an hour, those are all slow. Technically, every time something moves, it does shrink. It's just that the shrink at those kinds of speeds is microscopic. Uh, it's an amount of shrink that you won't notice. But every time somebody walks by you, they microscopically shrink their size. If human beings were used to going these ridiculous speeds, then... Uh, then this wouldn't be a paradox to it. This wouldn't seem like a paradox to us. We'd be like, oh yeah, things change size when you go real fast. Like if babies were always going light speed all over the place, we would see this happen all the time, and we'd be like, oh yeah, that's just the way things are. Things are like that, right? Uh, and if somebody came up to you and told you, hey, things only have one size, you'd be like, oh, what's wrong with you? Do you never move around? Are you not used to going almost light speed? I'm sorry for your life, man. Okay, now, all of this has been weird. Let's go weirder. Let's go weirder, okay? Because check this out. Let me pop back on my train. Let's say I'm driving past you guys really, 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 really fast, okay? Let's say I'm going like half the speed of light. So from my point of view, we said that the train stays 10 meters. And from your point of view, you see everything on the train will shrink, okay? The entire train shrinks, okay? Get this out of the way. Don't need that anymore. Um, the entire train shrinks. So here's my question. If me and the train shrinks, is that going to hurt my body? Because everything on the train would go crunk, would crunk, would crunk. Is that going to kill me? You see me crush. Is that going to kill me? Yes or no? Will that hurt me at all? No, because remember, it doesn't happen to me from my point of view. So from my point of view, I'm going to be totally fine. If you look in on the train, everything's going to be kind of like, like, you know how like if you grab a picture and you do, uh, uh I can't really get it to work right here, but you know how if you accidentally resize the picture, uh, like this, everything gets skinny in the picture. That's what you're going to see on this train. But, here we go, here we go, here we go. What do I see when I look at you guys? What do I see when I look at you guys? What do I see happen to you? If everything on the train is shrinking from your point of view, what does it seem like I would see if I look back at you guys?
you also shrink from my point of view. You also shrink from my point of view because length contraction, here we go, length contraction works both ways. If something moves a different speed than the viewer, then that viewer will see the other thing shrink its length. So if I am on a moving train, then I am going a different speed than you, so you see me shrink, but, but you are going a different speed than me, so I see you shrink, okay? I see you shrink. So let's go way back to my first, my, one of my early examples about the beam of light coming out of the train. Here we go. This beam of light came out of the train, and remember, we were in disagreement here. From my point of view, because I was on this fast-moving train, I said that the light went this crazy distance in front of the train. But from your point of view, because the train was moving, you said that it was a short distance in front of the train. The reason I saw it long and you saw it short is because of this relativity. I saw it long, but because all of this was moving a different speed than you guys, you saw that distance shrink down to a tiny distance. 